So in this video here, we're going to do some labeling and annotation of medical images. We're going to use some different kind of like images. We're both going to do some some dental panoramic um, X-ray images here of um, of teeth, and we're also going to use some MRR scans of uh, of the heart, for example. And we have these different kind of like uh, files for actually like annotating uh, medical images. I'm going to show you all of it. So this is actually like a pretty cool platform to have a lot of different kind of features for acts like um, annotating medical images. And it's actually like the only platform that I know of uh, that has all these different kind of features for medical images. So we can have some different kind of like views, uh, views of these diff different files when we're working with volumetric uh, data. So we have this DICOM viewer experience when we're actually like going to, uh, to label our data, we can load in files as videos, and then we can actually like annotate um, annotate these files here as a video and then we're gonna just see how how these videos here how the brain how the heart is actually like um, evolving or like how it's moving over time then we can like correct our labels based on that and then we can create a really nice uh, data set in that way so I'm going to show you how we can utilize V7's platform for annotating uh, different types of medical images we're both going to do like a true segmentation i'm going to show you how we can actually like, do annotations on video on an mr scan so this is actually really cool i'm just really excited to to show you guys the possibilities of v7 so first of all here we just have these different data sets i'll just go down to the bottom and then we can just take an example here the hard mri scan so basically here we can just open up one of the files in the in the actual like folder here we get up these different uh different views then we can actually like see if we just go to one of them, we can see we get these three different views. So we actually have this uh, DICOM um, viewer experience. So we have this actual uh, sagittal and also the coronal uh, view. So we have uh, different like viewpoints of our actual like objects or of our actual like body parts that we want to annotate in our medical images. Then we basically just have a video file here. So this is a DICOM uh, video file or like a DICOM file, which contains like these frames um frames here of the body parts so basically down here we can see we have 130 frames here we're at frame four and here we can just hit play and then we can actually like see how how these like how this heart here is actually like um, moving over time or like how it acts over time then we can add labels to it as well for each frame so basically here i'm just going to like label this i'm just going to show how we can actually like do labeling of these things I'm just going to delete, delete this one here and then we can see at the end we can see that we're actually like annotating this um, arterium so this is basically like an arterium inside of a heart we can see the polygon tool here is used for actually like annotating this part but we can actually like if we can see in the start here before we actually like going to this annotation we can see that it actually like starts uh, around here so we can see that basically like there's nothing here but then when I start to play it in the next couple of frames we actually like start to see we get this um, arterium here we can actually like start to actually like annotate it from here instead of wait until like this frame but basically i just want to show you how we can also utilize the uh, auto annotation tool for the medical images so basically if we want to annotate this uh, specific part here it can be like any like kind of like object or if you just want to like annotate like lungs or like some tumors or stuff like that then you can actually like just go in and do that on your data set but here i'm just going to choose so here i'm just going to create this boundary box with the um, auto annotation tool around the part that I want to annotate and then it will like, like find a prediction here I'm just going to choose the class so the Ethereum and here we can actually see we get this really nice labeling of um, of our Ethereum here we can even zoom in so this is actually like pretty good we can actually go in and also like change it so we can just extend it a bit here if you just tap on the annotation down here at the at the timeline and then we can just correct it a bit so we actually see we get some errors up here at the top we can just drag those in but then we can actually see how it develops over time then we just go to the next frame we can just go in and correct for that so here i'm just going to use the uh, the edit tool then we can go in press and then we can basically just like extend uh, the segmentation mask here for our uh, segmentation if we want to like segment out this specific object in uh, in the heart and then we can just correct for this auto annotation tool and then it just keeps evolving over time and then you just go to like the next frame you do the correction for your segmentation mask so i'm basically just going to do do that but again like the auto annotation tool just helps you a lot to start with and then over time when you actually like play these t uh these frames here you just go in and correct them as i do and then we can see we can even like extend extend it down here at the bottom so basically like we can just extend the annotations if we want to do that 
Uh, but after some time, we can see that this second annotation here is actually like pretty accurate. It, it evolves over time. We can just see how the shape of our annotation here changes. So this is really cool. It can be used for a lot of different kind of things. It, it is a really nice tool. We can get these different kind of views when we're actually like annotating, um, when we're actually like annotating medical images. If we just go up to the top here, we actually have some image uh, manipulation tools that we can do as well. We can set some presets if we already have that. But basically here, if you just want to like do the annotation easier for ourselves, we can actually like have this annotation fill opacity. So we can just like uh, choose the, the percentage of infill inside of our annotation. We can also have like the border if you want to have some really sharp borders. But one of the most significant um, manipulations that we can do is probably like play around with the contrast and also the histogram of these different kind of things. And we can also choose some different color maps. So it actually like makes our annotations easier. Uh, specific, specifically, if you have a lot of different kind of like parts going on, like here, you can even see in this image, it is really hard to distinguish between like different uh, different optics in these medical images. Then it's actually like really useful to use different color maps. But here we can basically like play around with the, the contrast, the image saturation and so on, and also the brightness. So if you want to have specific areas more bright uh, than others. But one of the most important things is probably like here, you can also like choose the histogram. So you can choose like what like intensities do you actually like want to have in your uh, in your image. So here with the histogram, we can basically just cho choose like the range of intensities that we want to have in our image. And that can probably like make our annotations easier. But one of the other cool things is the actual like color map down at the bottom. So we can both use like a bone, a jet, uh, hot uh, pair. So they have these different kind of like color maps that can be really useful uh, when doing annotations on the images. So here we can see that now we actually have a really nice boundary um, around our optic here that we want to actually like annotate. Uh, we can also choose some of the other different kind of like color maps. So again, it's easier to actually like annotate this image here with the, with these different kind of like color maps compared to just doing the raw one because here we can see that, that we just have these uh, gray pixel values. We can't really like we have some kind of like border here, but it, it is not as clear as when we're using a color map, for example. So here we have a really nice yellow border around our optic. So that can actually like improve our annotations. And when we improve our annotations, we will also improve our models at the end. So one of the other cool things with V7, when we're actually like doing annotation on like medical images here with Dicom, for example, uh, on volumetric data, it could be like the heart or the brain, is that these annotations here are act like in millimeters and not in pixels. So we don't have to do the conversion um, ourselves. This is a really cool thing. It's a, it's a game changer because this can be important and, and really easy to understand the size of, for example, like tumors. So if you're doing like labeling of tumors, um, it is just easier to understand the size of it when we're actually like doing the annotations in millimeters and also when we're training our models compared to pixels. So now when we've done our annotations on our Dicon files, I also want to show you how we can do it on, for example, like dental uh, panoramic x-ray images. Here we just go inside this data set and then I'm just going to choose, um, you choose a sample. We're just going to open up this one here. So here we can actually see that we already have an annotation. I'm just going to delete that one. So we actually want to segment out these teeth in this x-ray image. We can either like start to go up here with the auto annotate. We can see we have this um, generic auto annotate model. We can also see we have this optic detection model, but I actually want to show a semantic segmentation model for the tooth. But here I'm just going to draw this boundary box around these uh, teeth in the image. And now we should act like be able to segment them out. But here we act like just segmenting out like everything. So this is not really good. We just we actually like just want to have each individual tooth here in the image. We want to segment that out. Um, it can actually like be used for a lot of different kind of things. Uh, for example, like find the, like the length of the tooth. But basically here, I'm just going to delete this um, auto annotation. We will go back here again. Then we can go down to the models and then we can actually like start this tooth uh, segmentator. So we can actually like segment out um, teeth in our image. Now we're just starting the model here. You can also like train your own models here with V7. You can deploy them. You can actually like create workflows as well, as I've showed in the previous videos. Then you can actually like take your workflow. You can have your data set pass them through an AI model, first of all, to do uh, auto labeling, for example. If we have this two segmentator that I'm going to show you, we can actually like label our data set with that, first of all, throw it, throw it into a review stage, and then keep moving on from that. If we accept it from the review stage, just throw it into the complete data set, or else if they're rejected, uh, go to like manual labeling, then we correct for the changes that we need to do uh, from the model, and then we can throw them into the final data set as well. So it will be way easier to actually label your data set if you're using AI models 
uh, to help you automatically annotate your images. But now our model is up running here, so now we can actually like, go in and use it directly. We're just going to go inside our data sets again. We just choose the second image that we just had opened. Uh, so here we can actually like, see it. Now we just go up to this auto annotate. We can go in and choose the tooth segmentator. We can actually like, specify the map class here, so we will map it to a tooth. We just confirm that. We can also choose like uh, the confidence score up here at the top. But then we basically just draw our boundary box again, or like this uh, mark of where we, where we do act like want to do this uh, tooth segmentation. So here we can see we get some really nice results. These are acts like really accurate results. Just imagine if you have to like annotate all these teeth here in the image manually, you'll have to ha have like the polygon tool. You'll have to sit here and click around all like uh, all the edges of these uh, teeth in the image. It will just take forever. Just run this um, teeth segmentator and then you're basically like set to go. You can just directly throw it into a review stage. Then you can manually label the rest of the, uh, the teeth here that it hasn't detected. Here, I'm just going to go out of it. Here, we're going to delete it. Let's try to just go up and do use the uh, auto annotation tool again, and maybe just draw a bounding box only around this tooth here. So here, we're just getting a bounding box. Uh, maybe we can try with a bit larger one. So here, we still get some detections. We get some errors here. So now it's more like drawing these uh, straight lines. We can also try here at the end. So we actually get some false positives here. We can also see the confidence score over to the right. We can maybe try like another image here. So here we already have one uh, detection, but here we're just going to run it through on another image. Again, we just get some really nice results. Most of the teeth here are act like detected in the image. Again, we can just try another one here. We already have some, some detections. Here we have no annotations. We just draw a boundary box around the area that we want to do segmentation of. These results here are just way better than if we had to manually label them from scratch. So this tool here from V7 with the medical images, it can be used for a lot of different kind of things. Uh, they're definitely like the be best platform for annotating medical images that I know of. It's really cool to have some really nice features as I just showed you throughout this video here. Definitely check it out if you're working with like medical images, uh, DICOM or like NIFTI files, all these different kind of like things, uh, X-rays, MRI scans and so on. They have a lot of support. They're really cool. You ha we have these workflows that we can work with. Uh, we have these different kind of viewpoints. Just combining like all these things makes it really easy to uh, to annotate, label your medical images, and train your uh, medical AI models as well. So thank you guys for watching this video here. And again, remember to hit the subscribe button and bell notification under the video. Also like this video here if you like the content and you want more in the future. So I actually have this playlist where we go over all the possibilities, how we can utilize uh, V7's platform for annotating like different types of images, um, AI problems, uh, segmentation, optic detection, medical images, and so on. So it's actually like, really cool. We also have a text scanner where we can actually like, use their text scanner to scan text and documents, and then we can train our own AI models from that. So that is it for now, guys. I hope you see you in the next video. Bye for now.